Too often, all of Africa is taken as a single monolithic culture, despite the fact that it's the second largest continent in the world. This and the fact that many of the national borders were arbitrarily drawn by colonial powers in past centuries makes for a lot of misconceptions about the individual countries. Take Nigeria. It's a giant country, the most populous on the continent of Africa, in fact, with over 500 languages to its own. Its extraordinarily diverse culture resists all kinds of generalization. Perhaps it's best to start with the story we're hearing the most from Nigeria of late, the terror of Boko Haram. It may seem like the violence of Boko Haram is gripping the whole country, but that terror is mostly concentrated in the northeastern part of the country. And Boko Haram itself is not as unified as its earlier, less violent years. It was founded in 2002. These days, it has a number of renegade factions that split apart. Though the basic goal is to implement Sharia law, the different sects have either local, national, or international aims to that end. You may know that Nigeria has a really big economy, surpassing even South Africa, but the country's increasing wealth is not filtering down to all its citizens. Indeed, the larger the economy grows, the more unequal Nigeria seems to become. A lot of the country's wealth is concentrated in its handful of billionaires, and their money largely comes from the country's oil industry. Nigeria's oil comprises 80% of the government's revenue, but it's an industry racked with corruption. Billions of dollars have just gone missing over the last few decades, and the government, which faces corruption charges of its own, has done little about it. Another thing Americans get wrong about Nigeria is its religious makeup. People tend to believe that those in rural Nigeria practice obscure tribal religions and black magic, but only about 10% of the country adheres to local religions. The other 90% is split evenly between Christianity and Islam. Finally, one of the misconceptions Nigerians themselves frequently mention is that people from elsewhere in the world accuse them of being internet scammers. Everybody's got that email from the Nigerian prince seeking to transfer money to you in exchange for a small fee. These are called advanced fee frauds, and Nigerians resent the reputation it's given the country. The truth, of course, is that most of these scammers don't even come from Nigeria. But the scammers keep using Nigeria because anyone who believes that a Nigerian prince actually has money for them is exactly the kind of idiot that they want.